Now, uh, now we come to the part of minister's attitude toward ministry. So, uh, what is our attitude toward our ministry? And uh, first, God has a plan for our lives and for our churches. Uh, this is very important. Uh, that, that means our ministry is not an accident. It's not just something we started. It's something God has planned in eternity. In Psalm 139, 16 to 17, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God, how vast is the sum of them. So this verse, verses tell us that all the days ordained for me has been written in God's book before one of them came to be, before one of these days came to be. So all the days ordained for me were written there. All, all our lives were written in God's book. And what is written there is very precious. How precious to me are your thoughts. That it's full of God's thoughts. It's uh, wonderful thoughts. So all our days have been written in that book. And, and the church is the, you know, the, uh, all the people who worship God together, who gather together. So then God has a plan in each individual. God also has a plan for the whole church because he, God has a plan for each person. So these people gather together to form a church also, their lives have been written in God's book. So, uh, the churches also has been written in, in God's book. That means God has a wonderful plan for our lives, for the, for the life of the church. And God wants the church to prosper. When we follow God, God wants, us, wants the church to prosper. Okay, and then faith in God's power. I say a... 40 th uh, verse 31 but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint and then Philippians 4 13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me so when we wait on the Lord when we serve the Lord that uh, We'll, uh, our, we will renew our strength and we shall be mounted up like wings with wings like eagles and then we will not be tired and we can do all things through Him. Uh, so uh, that all things are possible for those who trust in God because God already has a, a wonderful plan for our lives. So we can do great things in, in Christ. But some people say, my church is not doing so well. So the first solution is that we have a, we build up a good relationship with God. We have strength from God. We have faith in God and we walk with God daily. And we have this wisdom from God uh, to understand the Bible, to interpret the Bible, and to believe that, yes, God's word are His promises. All the promises are there and He will keep His promises so I can have faith in His Word. And when I trust in Him and when I love Him, when I follow Him, then He will work in my life. So every minister, everyone who serves God must have this close relationship with God and he experiences God's help daily that he, has, he is renewed. And also he teach people, tell people how good God is and how wonderful God is and how God will bless us. And these people are changed one by one. If he Pay attention to these people and shepherd them, take care of them. Then they will grow and then the whole church will grow. So God has a wonderful plan for the individuals and for the whole church. And then uh, when we are faithful, don't feel guilty. Don't accuse our, ourselves for not having much growth. Even when the church is not growing much, we don't feel guilty. We, trust in God and we uh, you know we rely on God to give us strength and wisdom to do better and but when we cannot do so well we don't accuse ourselves we still rejoice in the Lord because the Lord is happy with us even when there are only a small group of people we rejoice in the Lord we 
uh, we have strength from Him. And then even when there are a small group of people, they are changed and they are renewed. And then they have strength from God uh, to tell more people about Jesus and bring them to Jesus. So it's very important that we all trust in God's promises and God's plan. And then we have God's wisdom and His presence. And then we can change people. 1 Corinthians 4.2 Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. So what is required of stewards? Uh, uh, that means uh, <clears throat> the person who is in charge of the family of God, that, that he is found faithful. So when I try my best when relying on Christ, I don't have to live under guilt or under pressure. So when I trust in God and I do my best, then I'm happy of what I've done and then I've been faithful and then God is happy with me. So I hope that we won't feel guilty because when we feel guilty, then we lose strength. Then we lose strength and we lose faith and we say, Lord, the Lord is happy with whatever I do for Him. This is very important. God is very happy with everything I do for Him. Whenever I serve Him, God is very happy. Okay, and then we have authority over Satan. So we, all these are attitudes toward our ministry that we don't fear Satan. Now, some people spread the teaching that, you know, you'll be attacked by Satan, that uh, people say, oh, I'm attacked again. And I want to say that uh, Jesus has promises that he'll give us victory. We don't have to be, to be afraid of uh, attack from Satan. Satan can only attack when we sin and we fall short of the glory of God and when we don't trust in God. When we sin, we repent and trust in God to forgive us, ask God to forgive us, and then God is very happy to forgive us. When we, when we uh, serve God, we ask God for strength and wisdom, and then God will bless us. Now, some people have this teaching that you go and cast out demons from people, you can be attacked by demons. It sounds like Demons are more powerful than God, but that's not true. The Bible tells us that, that we have the authority to trample over scorpions and snakes. We have authority over Satan. Matthew 16 verse 18, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. That Jesus talked to Peter, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. The, the Hades is a, uh, the, uh, hell. The gates of hell will not overcome the church. So when we trust in God and have a close relationship with God, Satan cannot overcome the church. And Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So uh, Jesus said, I give you the, the authority to trample on scorpions and serpents and scorpions. This represent the demons and over all the power of the enemy, uh, over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt us. So nothing can hurt us. We have total authority over Satan. We don't have to be afraid of Satan at all. And believing that God's word has power. Now, it's very important that we uh, also trust in God's word, that God's word has power. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So God's word will go forth from God's mouth. It will not return to him void. It will not return to God empty-handed. And it will accomplish what God pleases. And it will prosper in the things for which I send it to do. So God has sent the word of God to change people. Now there are people who will reject the word of God. It doesn't matter. There are always some people who accept the word of God and be changed by God. So we trust in the, the Word of God, that when we believe in God's Word, then we have power and authority. And also we 
have a close relationship with God. We love God and praise God and God's presence will come to us. The Holy Spirit will come powerfully to us and we'll have strength to serve God. And our mi ministries will be started uh, with fire. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Verse 12. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will reveal Will be, will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort, what sort it is. So now he who plants and he who waters, Paul used this terminology to, uh, to talk about people who sow the seed, who plants a church or who uh, uh, bring people to Jesus. And he, he who waters are the people who shepherd them, shepherd the believers to help them grow are one we are all one we when we serve God we are all one and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor so according to what we do we'll receive our reward and verse 12 if anyone builds on this foundation with gold silver or precious stones wood hay straw so each one has different kinds of work now what does uh, gold, silver, precious stone stand for? Are something God has commanded us to do? What uh, the mentality God wants us to have? Uh, what kind of mentality would be? Would, would it be? It will be faith in God and love God. And I want to honor God. I want to serve God. I want to glorify God. I want people to know about the goodness of God. I want people to grow in Jesus. And it's not for my glory. It's for God's glory. This is gold, silver, and precious stones. So it's very important to understand that um, that it's not how much we do. Now, of course, we want to do more. But the most important thing is the quality of our life and our good works. It's not how many people. Now, how many? when we bring more people to Christ, it's great. But sometimes people use methods that the Bible doesn't tell us to have. Some people may use uh, lies or they think they you know they have false prof, prof, uh, prophets to come or false miracles and then uh, people will uh, then more people will come we don't use those methods because then God is not happy I have seen people demonstrating fake uh, miracles in a church and they think that when they have these fake miracles they will attract more people. So we, we want to avoid this. Or some people even contact evil spirits. And this is very, very dangerous. So we don't want to do anything like that. We only want to serve God with a pure heart, with love and with a heart to glorify God and to bless people with a pure heart. And then when people just want, uh, just want the number of people, just want to glorify themselves, then what they're doing is uh, what they're doing is wood, hay, and straw and will be tested by fire and will be burned up. So it's very important for us to realize that the quality of our life and the quality of our work is most important, more important than the, uh, the number of people uh, who believed. Now, of course, we want more people to believe, but it's very important that we, uh, it's very important that we uh, build up on the foundation of Jesus Christ to love God and honor God with a pure heart with a sincere heart and to build up people to love God and glorify God everything we do is to glorify God it's not to glorify ourselves for instance some people lay hand on people and then they push people and they think that then many people fall down it will show it will show that he has power but even the people who were prayed for know that they were pushed down even the people knew that so it cannot uh, uh, cheat anyone and God can see that and God doesn't like that that is wood hay straw so I hope we don't do anything to make people think we have great power in God we just want to serve God with sincerity when we have the anointing it will come naturally 
and then each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is so the fire will test now this is not real fire because our work is not like a house our, our work is something invisible and so this fire is not some real fire but it's God's way of testing what we have done so what we have done if we do it with a pure heart and a heart to glorify God to love God and love people and and treasure people and see that they are important then God is happy with us and then he will he will remember it and then he will test it and it will show to be gold silver and precious stones okay and then as ministers too we need to handle failure that uh, we all face failure. So how do we handle failure when we serve God? That we don't want to be in despair when we have difficulties. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about the the carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body so Paul was persecuted he was hard pressed on every side he was persecuted on every side but that he was not crushed that he has hope and strength from God that he was perplexed that he could not understand but not in despair he was persecuted but not forsaken. He was always loved by God. And he was struck down physically but not destroyed. And always carrying about in a body the dying of the Lord Jesus. He's already always carrying uh, the dying of Jesus Christ. That he's dead with Jesus. He's crucified with Jesus. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. That we have the life of Christ. That we are we, cruci we are crucified with Jesus and then we have the life of Christ. So, so even though when we are persecuted, even though when, when ministry are not doing so well, we still trust in God and not, are not struck down. Then we have the peace and the joy of the Lord. Then we have strength. And then uh, even when we don't have too many people, but we still love them and care about them and build them up with the word of God and then they all have faith in God and they all trust in God and then they have they all have strength and then they will uh, you know they will grow they will grow first spiritually and then numerically gradually one by one that they bring the friends the family uh, to Christ and we also ask God for wisdom how to grow but when when it's low we don't uh, we don't get discouraged. We say, uh, God knows what I'm doing and God is happy with what I'm doing and I can trust in God. Okay, now here are questions related to this part. So, uh, now this covered the part that we talked about before. So, essential qualities of people who serve God. First, relationship with God. John fifteen five. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing if a person who serves God does not have a close relationship with God what, what will happen so if we abide in Jesus then he will abide in us and then we'll bear much fruit but without for without me you can do nothing so if a person who serves God does not have a close relationship with God then he can do nothing what he does is just superficial it's not uh, real spiritually it doesn't have uh, God is not pleased with it so we need to have this close relationship with God to trust in God to worship God to love God to honor God all the time that we spend time praying and also the whole day will be loving God thank you Lord Jesus you're so wonderful thank you Lord I love you I adore you I worship you I rely on you I obey you and glorify you and let people know how wonderful you are so we have this close relationship with God then we are strengthened then we have the peace and joy of the Lord now some people when they serve God they have a lot of frustration 
they a lot of anger with the people because they're not loving God and then they get angry now when people are not loving God we don't need to get angry we don't need to take their carry their sins we but we tell them God loves you when uh, when we are weak when you're weak then you can be attacked by Satan do you want to be attacked by Satan do you want to be uh, pleasing to God and then when we you repent and and trust in Jesus Jesus is very happy when you obey him he's very happy so we should repent and if we don't repent then Jesus want to spit us out from our mouth from his mouth so we want to come to God and repent so instead of getting angry we guide them to repentance and guide them to trust in Jesus to to grow and then Psalm 90 verse 14 oh satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all the, our days so how can we serve God joyfully? Why do many people serve without joy? Uh, we can have joy only in God, not in the result of the ministry. Many is from God. So satisfy us early with God's mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all the days that we'll rejoice in the Lord that He loves us, he, his, uh, his loving kindness is forever and and uh, he will help us he will strengthen us so I can rejoice in him I can uh, be satisfied in him then we have joy and strength and then why do many people serve God without joy because they just look at the result they just look at how many people come and how much money they have in the offering that way they are just looking at the external things we want to look at the real things what uh, whether God is pleased with what we do and if we love God sincerely we can say God is happy with me when I sincerely glorify God and tell people about Jesus we should say God is happy with me when I'm doing this sincerely then we will rejoice even when we don't have too many people and then uh, then we can rejoice in what we do Matthew 25 21 well done good and faithful servant so why are the two qualities important good and faithful Good means a good life, a life of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, a, a heart to care about people, to love people. So this is very important, the life quality we have to learn from Jesus. And then the faithful servant is faithful in doing what God has uh, sent us to do. God has called us to, to preach the word, uh, to encourage the people to grow in Jesus, to build them up to give them faith and strength so we do all these things then we are faithful why did Jesus ask Peter whether he loves him before he sent him to feed his lambs because it's very important that we have this loving relationship with Jesus when we have this loving relationship with Jesus and then we are strengthened by Jesus then we have the presence of Jesus when people don't love Jesus they don't have the presence of God they don't have the uh, the blessing of his pre presence then they're not blessing people with God's presence they're just blessing people with their with their words and the and people's words are faulty we have different problems so so we need to love God first and we, when we love God then we we have a strong presence of God and then God's presence will change our life and guide us to serve him Okay, Matthew seven twenty one to twenty three. Why are these people who serve? Why are there people who serve God, prophesy and cast out demons, do many wonders, and are rejected by the Lord? So this passage says that not everyone who said to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And there are many people who prophesy and cast out demons and do many wonders. And Jesus said, uh, Surely I tell you, I don't know you. Because these people just do the external ministry. They don't have the close relationship with God and they don't have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. They don't have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. They don't have love for God and love for people. They just have external works. So it's very important that we understand that, that uh, people who just serve externally are not pleasing to God that God wants to see us having quality of love and joy and patience and kindness and goodness and holiness 
because there are people who serve God and then they yell at the family members they yell at the wife and the children and they yell at the family uh, the church members they are angry easily so all these are not pleasing to God that means this person are not obeying God's word uh, God's word okay and then personal qualities of people who serve God John 3 30 he must increase but I must decrease so if a person serves God to raise up his prestige what will happen to him what does it mean to serve with humility so this is the word of John the Baptist he said Jesus must de increase but I must decrease so we are not to glorify ourselves we glorify God now God will glorify us in his way we don't have to seek glorif uh, uh, ways to glorify ourselves it's God who does it so we want to humble ourselves and not to exalt ourselves we just want to uh, serve God with humility so if a person serves God to raise up his prestige that means he uh, he just want people to acknowledge him and to say how great he is how powerful he is then what will happen is God is not pleased with him then God says he is proud and God doesn't accept him and then then all he everything he does could be in vain so we want to glorify God and not to glorify ourselves if a person so what does it mean to serve God with humility that means we serve humble people peacefully and uh, without telling people what we do we just serve people humbly that we are willing to serve people who are in needs when they are in needs we help them we don't ask for money now we can encourage them to give but we don't ask for money for this for our ministry uh, for serving them we don't ask them to give us extra money we just want to serve them diligently and when we serve we don't want to talk about how great we are so we that way we are glorifying God and not glorifying ourselves if a person who serves God lives in sin what will happen then what will happen is he will have a more distant relationship with God and God's presence will go away from him and he's not blessed by God and then what happen is God's uh, if a person continue not to repent then God will say I don't know you and he can enter hell and that is very terrible and there are people who are in ministry who can enter hell I've seen people I've seen a, a pastor who took our money from Global Fire Ministry uh, missions ministries and he refused to um, give me the receipt of the uh, you know of what uh, he's supposed to buy he did he refused to give me the receipt and he gives me all kinds of negative words and I feel very sad for him and I hope he does repent I hope he doesn't go to hell he could go to hell if he take the money from people and uh, saying that this is for ministry and actually it's for himself if he does that then he could lose the favor from God and also the most serious uh, condition is that he could lose salvation so I hope it doesn't happen to us that we want to say I want to be humble I want to obey God we don't want to live in sin any kind of sin uh, any kind of sin especially for many people the temptation of sex of money of power these three are very powerful many ministers are destroyed by sex destroyed by lust when they lust for women in a church when they have extramarital relationship when they have very close relationship with other women uh, they s might say my wife doesn't you know it's not nice to me and this woman is nicer to me than my wife so I you know I, I like this woman more then you know when we have this situation we should we must repent and we must work on the relationship with the wife and now very often when a man doesn't listen to the wife doesn't care about her and then she gets frustrated so we want to listen to her and 
the both person come together and talk about the relationship not to demand not to command but to say what can I do how can I uh, bring healing to this relationship now if you have a problem with this you can contact me and and I will help you to uh, overcome the problem in the marriage it needs both persons to be humble and to be willing to pay the price to build up the the uh, family to the, the marriage and then they can serve God with purity and also for some people it's money they steal money from the church and also uh, power they want more power they want uh, just want uh, the church to grow and then they seek ways that are not godly so all this we must be very careful and God has given me an illustration it's like we're building on a foundation we're built on it that is our ministry we build on it or every Christian whatever we do for God we're building on the foundation of Jesus Christ and then when we sin then we are tearing down what we built so we build and then we tear it down we build and then tear it down then it's in vain and the worst scenario is that we can lose salvation so we don't want to sin while ministering we want to repent of our sins and whenever any sinful thought come to us whenever any lust any greed for money any greed for power immediately we say this would destroy my life and God is not pleased with it immediately I reject it and repent and ask God to help me so it's very important that we uh, be sensitive that we become sensitive to any kind of sinful thoughts in our mind immediately we stop it that's the key to victory over sins that we immediately stop the sins whenever we have the sinful thought okay and then Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28 come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls so this verse says that come to me come to Jesus all you who are labor who labor and are heavy laden so when we are heavy laden when we have burdens we should come to Jesus and Jesus will give us rest will give us peace and take away our burdens and take my yoke upon you that take my yoke means to serve uh, God with Jesus yoke is what is put on the shoulder and the neck of a, an ox to pull the plow and so this is Jesus yoke we serve him and take my yoke serve God and then learn from Jesus learn from his lifestyle for Jesus is gentle and lowly in heart he's very gentle and humble and you find rest for your souls then you find rest in your for your souls now why do many people serve God with burdens and how can we serve without burdens so why do many people serve God with burdens because they're carrying the burdens themselves they think it's their own ministry they didn't realize that it's the ministry of God it's the ministry of God so we should not carry the burdens when the ministry does not grow we come to the Lord we come to the Lord with the people and seek God seek God for help and strength and not to uh, carry the burden when pe we carry the burden then we then we will bur be burdened and we don't have strength and how can we serve without burdens that we relax in God and trust in God and rejoice in God and have a close relationship with God then we will serve without burdens then we say it's God's responsibility and then if the church is not growing well we still have a close relationship with God and build up the relationship uh, of everyone with God that we want to help people in a group and also help them individually help them in a small group that we help each one to grow spiritually and when they grow spiritually and then the church will grow when they love God more and they have strength from God and they learn how to glorify God and tell people about Jesus and how to pray to have strength from God then they can help other people so and then we'll say even when the growth, growth doesn't come quickly we still trust in God and we relax in God and God is responsible it's God's ministry then we won't serve God with burdens 
Romans 12 15 rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep if a person who serves God does not feel the feeling of the peop people what will happen so as people who serve God and as husbands and wives too we want to rejoice with those who rejoice we rejoice with the people the members who rejoice we want to rejoice with our spouse and weep with those who weep we weep with uh, that means we feel sad for people who are weeping and also when our spouse is unhappy we weep with them we feel sad with them so we feel the feeling of people this is very important that we that we imagine we were that person how would we feel if I were that person how would I feel so if a person who serves God does not feel the feeling of the people what will happen what will happen is his message will be impersonal it's just theory because he doesn't have love for the people if a person serves God you know he has compassion for the people he will feel the feeling of the people and then his words will carry we talk about the burdens of the people who understand he understand the needs of the people and then his words will comfort the people he will be more person oriented instead of task oriented task oriented means just to do the job just to do the ministry instead of caring for the people we want to care for the people and help them to grow when we help them to grow and then they see our love for them then they will grow James 1 19 so then my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear slow to speak so if a person who and slow to anger also okay if a person who serves God does not listen to people what will happen what is the importance of, of listening so is we should be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to anger and if a person does not listen to people the person says the people says well um, I don't understand your message I don't understand how to apply this teaching how can you make this happen in your life and how can we trust God how can we have strength from God and then the minister doesn't listen and he just yelled at people and say just do it just do it then he's not listening to the needs of the people and then the people don't feel loved so we want to listen to the people and care about them and uh, so listen to the to the uh, to their needs to the requests to what they don't understand then we want to respond to them then we are connected to the people in the ministry is very important to be connected to the people that our ministry our life is connected to the people we're not just serving uh, like we are high above the people now our spiritual life should be high but our connection people with the people should be right where the people are we should be connected with the people right where they are we understand how they are we understand the difficulties we understand the feelings then people will feel connected and then our message will not be just theory and then quality as a shepherd Matthew 20 28